Harold Washington was prepared to be mayor. So he had trained, he had educated himself, he had been a part of the democratic machine for 30, 40 years. You know what I mean? So he he was really a student of this and he was and he essentially groomed him. So when the opportunity and the time came, he was ready. So I'm like, well, we need to groom folks and be ready. And it's not happening in like a year or two or every four years or whatever the case might be. It's like we need to be preparing for like decades to come. Hey, everybody, this is Mike, and you're watching The Real Black Podcast. And we got a quick hit for you today. Um, a gentleman who has a history with Real Black has a brand new film they've produced coming out in theaters tomorrow, October 7th, 2022, called Punch Nine for Howard Washington. We're not anti anything but hatred. We're not anti anything but segregation. Prejudice, that's what we're against. We're not against people. We are for people. And having said that, it's our turn. It's our turn. It's our turn. Touch nine for Harold Washington. Good evening. The results of Chicago's three-way race for the Democratic nomination for mayor today took many in that city and the nation by surprise. I think a lot of people thought that City Hall was going to turn black overnight. With us on the show is Raymond C. Lambert, producer Punch Nine for Howard Washington. Welcome to the podcast. I'm glad you. I can glad I could get you on such short notice. Please, I always enjoy talking to you, and uh, I'm I'm really happy to be here. So, yeah. Now, there. now, punch not Howard. For those who don't know, um, can you tell us a little bit about Harold Washington? Yes. Yeah, so, Harold Washington was the first black mayor for the city of Chicago, which you know it was a big deal. Um, it really changed um, not only Chicago politics, which was a formidable machine, and maybe the the most formidable scene in municipal government uh, in America. And he changed that and he changed the Democratic Party and even national politics. Um, no one thought that a black mayor could ever happen in a city like Chicago. And uh, he took on the machine and, and he beat him. Mm. And uh, Chicago, well, I mean, I know I know Howard Washington. I'm, I'm old enough to remember when he was sure. mayor. Sure. Yeah. And I remember the uh, Eddie Murphy bit. <laughs> Yes, which yeah. was it. so so he was in the culture, you know what I mean? It was like he wasn't just yeah. you know this mayor of this city. Um he was he was in the culture, he was on the cover of Jet magazine or Ebony magazine, and in addition to being on the cover of Newsweek. Um, and then there was this young man who was watching him who idolized him, who uh, in many ways patterned himself, and that man became president. His name is Barack Obama. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. There's very specific rules to navigating the the sure. politics of Chicago, and uh, you know Howard Washington, I suppose, laid the blueprint for Absolutely. for Obama to be as successful as he he became in in Chicago and Illinois politics. Yes, and which ultimately led to him being a senator. Harold had knocked down a lot of those doors uh, for him, and we talk about that, and the film talks about that because we have. David Axelrod and uh, Valerie Jarrett, who end up becoming the sort of key advisors for uh, President Obama as he moved forward um, through that uh, through his term. Okay, so we're to, we're talking to Raymond Lambert, whose film Punch Nine for Howard Washington opens tomorrow, October seventh, twenty twenty two, in eighteen cities, AMC theaters. We really focus from 83 election is where, where we really sort of tell that particular story from that election until his death. But within that, we do some biographical stuff. So you can sort of, we set up with what Chicago was like before he became mayor, what kind of place was it? And what was the uh, driving? Uh, there were a lot of things happening in the city that sort of forced his hand, if you will, because he had a great job as a U.S. congressman. He was living a, you know, living his best life. And he essentially came out of that in order to take on this, take on this task. And he was, he was, I mean, it was a fight every step of the way. Um, 
And in a city where 80% of the people are registered Democrats, they became Republicans overnight. So it wasn't, he wasn't able to govern initially the way most mayors had governed in this city. Um, and he overcame all of those obstacles, which I think ultimately probably cost him his life. But um, we, we, we deal with all of that. Right. Well, it seems like there's a convergence around the same time. Jesse Jackson's yes. right, president, right? Yes. So this, uh, you know, the early 80s is sort of the the culmination of the, the, the pinnacle of black American black Americans in yes. politics. Yes, no question. And actually, the model that Jesse Jackson used was Harold Washington's model. Because oh, with Jesse, yes. So there was a coalition that decided that it was time for a black mayor in the city of Chicago. And they actually had a list of names of people who could possibly take on this machine and win. Jesse Jackson's name was on that list. But mm -hmm. what, what came out of that was Harold Washington. And there actually was a lot of talk around Harold running for president at some point because he was one of those, one of the first people to put together a rainbow coalition at which it became which was progressive whites, Latinos, um, and blacks, and demonstrating that your problems are my problems, and let's go change the way things are done. And then Jesse took that model and said, I can duplicate this model all across the country. And, uh, and that's what he did in 84 and in 88. Fantastic. Yes. So, yeah, and we also had black mayors in Philadelphia, yes. and Maynard, Maynard Jackson in Atlanta. So, I mean, yes. you, you're really capturing an energy yes. uh, that, that uh, I don't know, it feels like it hasn't, it was a moment. And then yes. it, it almost ended when Harold Washington died. I mean, it's yeah. sort of, for whatever reason, yeah. I mean, and I, I can speak to Philadelphia. I know you're aware of Philadelphia. Absolutely. Um, but uh, it, it's, it wasn't a long lasting thing. You know, these cities that are heavily populated by blacks, but don't have black leadership. Um, I, you, you hit on something because obviously Wilson Good, who I was paying attention to more at that particular time, I think they got elected the same year, 83 or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, I don't think we do a good job at succession. Like we don't really, I'm talking black folks, right? Yeah. Um, we don't really plan it out. It's almost like a, uh, I always tie it back to the church. It's like a Messiah complex where it's like this one person comes along and it's going to change everything for us. And we put all our eggs in that basket, which is not a bad thing, but right. what happens when that cart inevitably overturns? Like how, where are we going to go from here? Um, and then we spend out of control. So Chicago is a perfect example where Upon Harold's death, Eugene Sawyer took over as acting mayor, but it took 29 years before we got another mayor, a black mayor or, uh, you know, a mayor of color. It's like 29 years later. Yeah. Which, you know. That's crazy. So like Atlanta, Atlanta, you know, okay. since Maynard, you know, it hasn't really been anything but black men. Yeah, well, we fully had John Street after and all that, but okay. it, it's been okay. it's been bumpy, and now okay. it, it seems like it's it's moved it's shifted over to another direction in terms sure. of who, who controls the political power in, in a major city. Okay. Um, you yeah. know, from the early '80s, it it was black people's turn. It, it yes. felt like it felt That's like a great, That's a great point. Yeah. So, for those who are in these cities. I mean, Philadelphia is one of the cities that Punch Nine for Howard Washington is playing, and, and I hope that people go see it at Franklin Mills or AMC Cherry Hill this weekend to support. Um, and we have the list. We'll have the list of uh, all the other cities in the in the description. But um, for those who aren't in those cities, how how can they get a chance to see this film? What, what's so, the rule? It looks like the life is going to be, we're going to make this limited theatrical run with the idea of being, we spoke about, you know, just sort of, it's, it's really become like, or at least I've embraced it this way, as a grassroots movement. It's almost like, yeah, as you know, as independent filmmakers, this is very independent. And uh, we were fortunate to, to make this collaboration with AMC, who really liked the film and has really gotten behind it um, to the extent that they can from their, their corporate vantage point. 
Um, and then the goal is to um, draw the attention of one of these major distributors, be it a Apple or a Hulu or a Magnolia, or whoever can ha that has the resources and the and the and the connections to really um, blast this out so that it's available to folks all of because I think it's so relevant and timely. But that's the next step. So after this run yeah. here. We'll see where we land, and then hopefully we'll have some great news to announce as far as where it goes next so folks will have access okay. to it. Well, it's great that you're getting it out before the midterms. Yeah, it's perfect for that. It really yeah. – um, we, we screened last night, and one of the things – you know, I watch this thing, and I see something. We pack so much in there, and it reminds me. The black voter turnout for Harold's election was 92%. You know what I mean? Now it's hard to get 30 it's like okay, well, we can't really change anything with thirty, and it can change if we if we consistently. I, I believe that anyway. Well, people know? are so disillusioned. I mean, I'm sure yes. even in the comment sections, people's the 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 two parties that they they're not right. They're not. You don't even have a Howard Washington to to say like, look, I'm I'm here to work for you. Sure, you know. Sure. Uh, so it's sure. it's a lot of, a lot of people have become apathetic to voting and all that stuff you know so which i disagree with but i really do but i think i think what you'll see from this film is that harold washington was prepared to be mayor so he had trained he had educated himself he had been a part of the democratic machine for 30 40 years you know what i mean so he he was really a student of this and he was and he essentially groomed him so when the opportunity and the time came he was ready so i'm like well we need to groom folks and be ready and it's not happening in like a year or two or every four years or whatever the case might be it's like we need to be preparing for like decades to come now who's next how are we gonna train it's hard work but um if we want you know that proverbial seat at the table and our fair share of what's happening. It's a, it's a constant struggle and a constant uh, battle. So, uh, and I think this is a great model to, to, to see how it was done if we want to um, duplicate it. Definitely. Well, you know, the whole key to voting is, is you, you show up and you show out for the things, the, the things that you care about, the sure. topics, the issues that you care about. And yeah. I want everybody to know that uh, Punch Nine for Howard Washington is opening in 18 cities, major cities around the country through AMC this weekend, October 7th, 2022. And uh, that it's your chance to vote to support this. Yes. Film. Thank you. Thanks. I thought he was going to be mayor for another 10, 15, 20 years. We're number one, we're number one, we're number one, one, one. There was a time when you said Chicago and someone would respond like a Pavlovian dog, segregation. But now, anywhere in the world you go, when you said Chicago, you know what they'll say to you? 